Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today bringing you guys and gals One Piece. Episode 670 review, that is 670. Of course, episode link is going to be found in the box below on both Crunchyroll and OnePieceOfficial.com. This week's episode of One Piece World. It's actually simple. Now, the basics, of course. The pacing is actually okay. It's not that slow. Normally, it's really fucking slow. But no. They actually have pretty good pacing for a One Piece episode. Therefore, okay. When it comes to the animation, was overall okay. But some scenes were actually pretty good. The scenes involving, to my knowledge, it was, to my recollection, it was, number one, the Sabo and Burgess stuff. I mean, even though Burgess is still doing the teeth closed, <laughs> I'm like, dude, what the fuck, man? So that shit's stupid. But the surge, or the, in this case, they call it the shockwave elbow in the anime, I believe so. In the manga, where I read it from, it was called the surge elbow, whatever. Point here is that it's an elbow shockwave projectile that is fucking disgusting. And then you have Sabo, what he did, which I'll, I'll get to soon, because that's going to spur some debate. And then you have... The Lao G shit. Which actually was good at it was good. The animation for that shit was good. And that was funny. Yo, Lao G shit was funny as fuck. Oh, hold on. But before I get to the Lao G. And then the third thing that was good animation, I would give to the last scenes involving Zoro and Pika. Where Zoro actually cuts that giant stone whatever it was, in, like, pieces. So, those are the three scenes that I recall had the best animation overall. Animation, I'll give an okay plus. Now, when it comes to character development, not really any character development for anyone except for, I'd probably say, Sabo, because he did some hockey shit. And he did some shit. It was like, yeah. Like, yo, man. He went straight Vulcan. I was like, yo, what the fuck is... And then, you have what's going on with... Because Dillinger somehow is there with the, in the, the toy house. Frankie is fighting against the Marines successfully. Senor Pink does show some concern for Dillinger. Still hard-boiled. And... Rebecca in the Coliseum, she finally realized that these guys are on a whole new fucking level. On a whole new goddamn level. And then there's some character for Trayball. Where Trayball, even though, let's be real here, he looks like a damn fool. And all those sticky stuff. The dude's accurate. He's pinpoint. He blew up like a few slabs of stone just to take out a fly. Which he did shoot in between his eyes. So, Robin sees that, has to stop Leo from just running in there and getting himself killed. So, that's the character. And from the story, let me start with that first part right there. Because Treyball has displayed unusual skills, they have to reconsider the plan. They just can't run in there, throw the grape, or throw the Tabasco fake grape among the other grapes, and expect them, to be, and expect them not to get caught. No, no, no. Trayball could see a fly, you know, track its movements, and then actually take a sticky bullet thing in between its eyes in an instant. So this guy is very perceptive, and they have to be aware of that. So obviously, Trayball ain't no bitch. That's number one. Number two, you have what's going on with the toy house. Very simple. Frankie, he's actually winning. He's the Vice Admiral. Again, the, the Vice Admirals fluctuate wildly in power. I don't get it. Like, for me, some of these Vice Admirals should be straight up Admirals, but they're going to be like three Admirals. Like, I, I never understood why they can't be like five or ten Admirals. Like, I, I don't get it. Because some of these Vice Admirals suck dick. So, either way, you have Vice Admiral, uh, I forgot, Basti. And he does an air cut against Frankie, not a big deal, but Frankie, you know, he blocks that shit. And then, you know, coup de burst, and then he gets sent blown back. So, 
It looks like the Don Quixote's are going to step in there and regulate. Parkour. Dillinger, Senor. And then every time, like, see, like they made a soundtrack specifically for Senor Pink. Have you noticed that? Do, 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 do. I'm like, what the, like, they specifically made an OST for Signore. And every time he says something, has to be like, <laughs> you see him, he's like nine facing the chicks. He's just like, yeah. And then he's like, his side of his body is like etched out and shit. Like, looking like really detailed. And then you have all the girls like surrounding him looking really bad. Like, oh, Signore. And like, what the fuck is that? Like, it's, it's weird. It's funny as fuck, but it's weird. So, thing years that that's still going on. They're still fighting. And Frankie's out again. He's being the Marines, but it looks like there's going to be now more of a team effort on the part of the Marines and the Quixotes to take out Frankie. And then you have what I think is one of the funniest parts in the entire episode. Lao G. This dude, he's weird, man. Like every time he says a word. And the word has a G in it. He has to go like, yeah, G. And I'm like, what the fuck? Are you like, what are you doing, man? Like, yeah, G. Yeah. And he's just like twerking and shit. And well, not like full on. <laughs> no, 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 not that type of twerking. Ew. Yo, yo, get your minds out of the gutter. Shit. <laughs> but listen, like this dude, so old, can't even like stand up right. He's just like fidgety and shit. And he's just like. But it's beastly. It's beastly as fuck. Like there's one after he punches the toy soldier. I had to save this little like 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 this little audio clip because this shit's funny. This shit's funny, son. Like I'm like yo, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Jeez. Shit, and he can't fucking maintain a balance. He's just fidgety as fuck. He has veins everywhere. He's like, yeah. Come here, Shirley. Come here, Shirley. Wow! I'm like, dude. What? Like, yo. Honestly, like, that to me was easily the second best part of the episode. I'm not, I'm not even, that shit was so. <laughs> My OG, son. And he has some speed. Like, he's old as fuck. He has veins all over his face, arms. Has this weird ass, just like, like superhero, tight skin uniform, just G. And he's beastly. Like, that one punch, the toy soldier. Yeah! Like, skill. I'm like, yo, oh, G. I I mean, old age is like a huge factor in One Piece, but the old dudes just seem to be the most baddest dudes on the planet. Like, they're just straight up badasses. They're hardcore. Lao G's the definition of hardcore. The one scene when you have the one B uh, uh, Tontada coming at him, glasses. And when he take when he puts on the glasses to smack him away, and like they show you like time in slow motion. It reminded me of a lot of that one old Dragon Ball Z scene between Master Roshi and Krillin. In the boot, I thought was it the twenty third Budokai or the twenty second? I forgot which one. Either way, thing here is that you have Krill and Master Roshi. They're doing like all types of shit, and people can't track what they're doing. So Roshi and Krillin literally recap what they did in like an instant, and Laoji does the same shit. He recaps what he did in an instant to the fucking. Tone Todd, who couldn't catch what the hell you did. So that to me was funny. I thought that was hilarious. Hilarious. And then the, the next part of the episode Zoro basically gonna take I mean, there's a little small scene of Kinemon, and Kinemon basically, he. It looks like he's transformed into a flamingo outfit so he can go and sneak on top to go back down. Because he was going the wrong way to begin with to or get Kanjiro. 
So that's obvious. Now, when it comes to Zoro, Zoro's taking Pika one on one. That's what it looks like. Luffy's gonna take Viola. They're gonna go kick Flamingo's ass. Which we'll see how that turns out. And Zoro's taking on Pika one on one. And then finally, the last part, which is obviously the most important part, in my mind at least, Burgess, Sabo. You have the bloodlusted fighting fish. And they get taken out for the most part by Bartolomeo, by Diamante, Sabo. You know, Burgess brings out the shockwave elbow. The first time. This thing got obliterated. Like, shockwave elbow. Yeah. And then you have people in the crowd like, what the fuck, man? Don't bring us into the middle of the fight. And then you just have them like, ha, 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 ha. I'm like, dude, it's, it's funny. But the main thing here is what Sabo did to counter. Because if you didn't notice, when they had their cross counter of the attacks, Burgess had the elbow covered in armor hockey. But it still got broken through by Sabo's dragon claws. And it's it's obviously it's like a memento of some sorts to Monkey the Dragon. Because Monkey the Dragon is his, if I would use the proper term, sensei. So his sensei, now that we've seen Sabo use actual like dragon claw techniques, now there's been a debate whether or not dragon is actually a dragon. If he ate a dragon zoan fruit. A mystic dragon zone fruit. Or if he actually knows of former martial arts that he created himself. Or if it's just Sabo's way of... Because no one really knows about Monkey D. Dragon, what his powers are. They can be a lot of things. I'm going with wind. That's my personal opinion. But the thing here is that the fact that Sabo's using something like Dragon Claws... And the fact that it was so powerful where one attack could completely counter and usurp the power of the shockwave elbow. I mean, it's a testament to how powerful Sabo is. I mean, honestly, Sabo, among the three, he's the strongest. And honestly, it's because of the fact that Sabo, I think, had like genuine training from Dragon. Ace never had that type of genuine training from Garb, or from anyone, for that matter. Not from Whitebeard. And Luffy, he only got training from Rayleigh, but even still, that training was only like for like, what, give or take two years. No, I'm sorry, a year and a half, and then six months of his own training. And I'm pretty sure Dragon has spent a lot of time training Sabo. A lot of time. More than two years, I would guess. Easy. So, I mean, that, those are my thoughts. But we'll have to wait and see about that. So, uh, until that Sabo flashback comes, when he survived the attack from the Tenubito, what Dragon did to Sabo as a means of training, and, you know, how many years that was, so on and so forth. Because Sabo, he's disgusting. If you can counter the Surge, the Shockwave Elbow, with just Armored Hockey Dragon Claws, which, of course, also hints that the potency of his Armored Hockey is greater than that of Luffy's, obviously, if for... for well, I mean, even that of Virgo. And even though Virgo was coded, he had the full body works. The problem here is that Sabo's potency is just far greater. Because that, 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 at least I would assume so. I would assume so. Because the fact that he did so casually is, is, is yeah. Yeah. So I'm done. King Lightning. Rate the video. Comment. Subscribe. Peace. Have a nice day. Hey, and the rating. I'm sorry. The episode rating overall, actually pretty good overall. I'm even a good plus. It was better than most episodes, better than the last one. Or I think it was, yeah, I think it was the one before that with fucking Diamante doing like stupid shit. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Bang. Oh, stupid. So, uh, way better than that. So, yeah, good plus. And I'll see you guys later. Rate the video, comment, subscribe. Peace. Have a nice damn day.